what are the some of the biggest dating and relationship mistakes you see people making right now? Wow, that's awesome for you to ask that because it kind of it kind of lives at the front of my mind because people are constantly pulling on me all over the country relative to dating advice. And when I give them the advice, they don't necessarily want to hear it. I think um, one of the biggest mistakes is um, when people are searching for their type. I think this thing called type is really throwing a monkey wrench in the process of really uh, locating your kind. The Bible talks about not being unequally yoked together. Well, it's not talking about, you know, looks and all of this. I mean, of course, looks are important. We, we need to be attracted to a person, but looks are fleeting and it's, it's seasonal. You know, I've been married 28 years and we've changed quite a lot from our 20s to our 50s. And so when, when people are in pursuit of, of type, it's almost like committing yourself to a product based on the packaging without proving the content. And so I think that's one of the major mistakes is, is that we're, we're focused on things that are fleeting and trivial. I think the, the second mistake people make in terms of relationships is to assume or, or maybe even to subconsciously believe that a relationship is going to um, give you identity, give you a sense of purpose, uh, make you whole. Uh, it's not going to do any of those things. A relationship is not going to make you happy. All of these things are things that you must actually bring to the relationship. Because if, if you don't bring it to the relationship, it simply means that you are bringing your dysfunction and keeping it up on another person. So the type piece, the thinking that somehow a relationship is going to, is going to fix me. And thirdly, the mistake we make is when we pursue relationships from the perspective of what can I get from this guy? Or what can I get from this girl? That's not how great relationships are formulated. Now, I don't want to preach. I am a preacher, so I can start preaching at any moment. But great relationships in general are not based on what I can get from a person. Rather, it's based on what deposit may I make in this person's life? If, if it starts from a place of selfishness, selfish intent, it's going to fizzle out because, you know, it's low level thinking. When, when I enter into a connection with a person with the idea of making a deposit into their lives, I reap what I sow. And if I have a like-minded person, like my wife and I, we serve one another, you know, therefore there are are never any unmet needs in my home because I'm constantly focused on what can I give my wife? And this has been our, um, this has our, been our MO since we were dating. So I think those three things, selfishness, the idea that someone's going to complete you, you know, these things are some of the big problems in relationships, in the way we approach relationships. And the superficial type piece. Let's start, let's start to unpack that because you talked about how we shouldn't go after somebody, you know, based on the type of a person or the type that we have, as far as who we're attracted to, like what, what qualities do you think are important when it comes to a partner in a romantic relationship? And then how can we begin to attract that person? That's a great question as well. And, and I have to admit that my, my perspective on, um, on the qualities that we should look for in a person has deepened over the years. I think one of the things we overlook is I think men should look for a woman that is 
feminine. And I think women should look for a man that is masculine. And by that I mean, or should I say I don't mean, I'm not talking about the, the red pill, misogynistic kind of masculinity or the, the world's concepts of uh, femininity that boil down to nothing but uh, overt sexuality. But there's a, there's a femininity that God has built into a well-adjusted woman. There's a masculinity that God has built into a well-adjusted man that makes a feminine woman function at her highest level. When a masculine man meets a feminine woman, there's, uh, there's a grace that's upon her life that empowers him to be his best version. And so I heard one guy uh, put it this way, I don't remember his name, that every man should pay attention to the woman that makes him feel like the best version of his manhood. And every woman should pay attention to the guy that makes her feel like the best version of her womanhood. Now, this goes against popular trends because popular trends start on the external of the person. What does the person look like? What does the person possess? How are they built? How much money do they make? But this thing called masculinity versus femininity is extremely important. Um, I also think that we should really pay attention to the people who want us. Most people are running away from the people that really want them. And we are in pursuit of somehow we're just uh, ultra attracted to the people who don't want us. While, while they're, you know, they're um, amazing men and women who have shown, demonstrated interest, maybe even articulated interest. I think these people have to be considered. Um, I think you should look for a person, and this happens through dialogue, conversation, and questioning. You should look for a person that fits your future. Now that's assuming you know what your future is. That means that you will have had to have done the personal work to know who you are, to know where you're going, so as to know who really fits into your future. I think a man has to know where he's going to choose a woman that fits into that. A woman has to know where she's going to choose a man that would be a suitable partner for that endeavor. And, and then, of course, you know, you, you have the physical appeal. We don't want to discount that, but I mentioned it way down the list because I don't think it should be priority number one. You know, like in the world, we have this scale. Where does the person rate one to 10? Well, I quite often say, you don't necessarily need an eight, nine, or 10 to make an amazing relationship. Sometimes you have an amazing wife or an amazing husband at a five or a six. And with the proper, with the proper embrace from the right person, they can improve the the physical appeal. And, and of course, you, you want to search for a person that um, gives you some emotional comfort. I don't think relationships should be emotionally traumatic. And, and there are a lot of people who are choosing a lot of people that look good, they make great Instagram posts, but emotionally they are wrecking the individual. You need a person that's intellectually compatible. You know, in church culture, we have this thing where we say, well, be not unequally yoked. In a lot of churches, we kind of limit that to love Christ like I do and go to the same church I go to. But then there's no intellectual compatibility. And then you find a struggle moving forward in terms of being able to hold conversations. So those are some of the things that I think.